My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about pre-ignition and detonation. A lot of people, oh Jesus Christ, <laughs> a lot of people have asked uh, for this video, um, and I can kind of understand why, because there's a lot of um, mix-ups with exactly which one is which, and are they the same thing, and blah 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 blah. So one of the first things I want to talk about is, we're going to talk about uh, petrol, because this is a bike channel, we will get to diesel, and I'm going to do an absolute slurry of diesel videos, and so on and so forth. Don't worry, don't shit your pants or anything. But at the moment we're going to stick with petrol, uh, gasoline if you're uh, in the colonies. And um, there are two numbers that are associated with detonation and pre-ignition, and one of them is the one that we should be concentrating on, and one of them is wrong. So, one of the things that people get confused with is the flash point. They think a flash bang, you know, bang bang, a flash point is when, um, I don't know, it ignites or something. This is wrong, a flash point is basically the point at which it is going from the transition from being a liquid to a vapour, to a gas. Um, and the flash point for petrol is 43, uh, minus 43 degrees Celsius, which is minus uh, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. All is good. So our flash point is basically our um, ev uh, ev uh, evaporation. That's our evaporation temperature, basically. Um, what people, uh, the other one that people do say, which is the right one, is um, auto ignition temperature. Uh, ten. So for gasoline, that's uh, plus 280 degrees Celsius, and I've got it written down this one because I don't know my Fahrenheit, uh, plus 536 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, it's 280 degrees Celsius, and if you live in 1946, it's uh, 536 degrees Fahrenheit. Your auto-ignition temperature is if you go all the way back to your high school or secondary school days, you have your fire triangle and it seems childish, but you should know it. You need O2, you need a fuel, and you need heat. If you can't remember your fire triangle, or you never did it for some strange reason, fair enough. If you want fire, you need all of these three things. If you do not have these three things, you cannot have combustion, because combustion is a rapid exothermic reaction involving oxygen. Rapid oxidation, basically, it's like rust but quick, and a lot of and, and it's exothermic, so a lot of heat is uh, a byproduct, a waste product. So if you don't have fuel, you've got heat and oxygen. You've just got hot oxygen. You get rid of oxygen, you just got hot fuel. If you've got no heat, you've just got fuel and oxygen, which is what we call a rocket. Um, so basically, you need all three, but obviously in a, in, a, in an engine. We have fuel and oxygen because we have a fueling system, be it carb or be it injection. We have a cylinder that has a volume which can hold all two because we have oxygen in the air, 21%, 20%. Um, so we have the two, and if you have enough heat, it will ignite. And this is the auto-ignition temperature of petrol. If you have um, a, a good mixture of oxygen and fuel, the uh, petrol will self-ignite, auto-ignite, it'll just ignite if the temperature is high enough and the temperature is 280 degrees C depending on your stoichiometric value, pressures, stuff like that but generally that's the accepted um, accepted number. So, um, now we need to get over, now, now we've got that, obviously um, with a diesel what you do is you compress uh, your mixture until you get above not this temperature, so you get above diesel's auto ignition temperature and then the diesel just combusts. Um, we call that diesel, in petrols we call that knock. So now we've got all the uh, secondary school stuff out of the way, now everyone's up to speed and all the rest of it. Now I want to talk about is the difference, <coughs> excuse me, the difference between detonation and pre-ignition. Well, pre has the pre word, so we'll start with that. So we've got pre-ignition. So hopefully we all understand that with spark. Fucking move that out of the way. Hopefully we all understand that um, a, a spark ignition engine, a gasoline engine, has ignition timing. We have to wait 
until the piston is in the right place of where we want it to then initiate um, the combustion inside the cylinder. And we do this with time and spark plugs and sensors and all sorts. And we do shift it backwards and forwards when we increase or decrease uh, our RPM. And there will, there will be a video on uh, advance and retarding of ignition and what effects that has. But anyway, so um, our pre-ignition basically means that just say that our, um, our uh, spark event is at um, 10 degrees before top dead centre. Let's just say it's exactly then. Anything, if that fuel ignites at, at any point in any time before 10, you know, 10 degrees before top dead centre, it is pre-ignition. Pre-ignition is usually caused by hot spots. So if you have a lot of carbon buildup or whatever, stuff like that, um, uh, just say a hot electrode because you're using the wrong spark plug, uh, something generally going wrong, even a scrap of metal that's just flaked off your bloody piston or maybe your piston ring or maybe it's just ingested something because you're a dickhead and you don't use air filters um, anything that's you know that basically gets hot enough, if it has a hot spot and there's enough fuel and oxygen around that hot spot as compression starts to occur or you've been a dickhead and you've lowered your compression too much you will get pre-ignition now the definition of this is like I said it is before anything before so it is anything before your your ignition uh, ignition event anything before that is pre-ignition so that's the definition of that detonation happens in a different way altogether detonation is after your ignition uh, event so your ignition event this is time so we'll just say that our ignition event is right there all of this here if ignition occurs there that's pre-ignition obviously it makes sense and anything after this anything after this is detonation so what is detonation detonation is where the fuel air mixture um, basically ignites somewhere else so let's just look just say you're looking down into your cylinder like so and let's just say we have a spark plug over here with its electrode like so we're on the top stroke we're on the we're on our way to TDC we um, you know we fire our spark plug that's where your heat comes from there's fuel and oxygen in here so it starts to combust and it starts to make a there's a flame front and it's never like this it's massively haphazard um, I will do a video on stuff like that it's crazy because of turbulence and all the rest of it but your ignition event has already occurred combustion has started to, it's t started to take place there is a flame front uh, propagating throughout the entire combustion chamber that was initiated by a spark plug and then over here something ignites it just ignites over here and then this starts to burn like this and then maybe a spot over here it can be more than one a spot over here ignites generally because your compression ratio is too uh, great you've got hot spots it can be very similar to pre-ignition as in um, yeah, to pre-ignition, the cause can be quite similar, but there is a def there's a definite line between what is pre-ignition and what is detonation. The problem is, is you've got two um, shock waves, you've got two pressure waves that then collide into each other. When they collide, an awful lot of energy. You've got to think about it like this. It's kind of like a car going into a wall at 60 mile an hour, or a car going into another car going 60 mile an hour the other direction. It's kind of like that. It's an energy. It's a you know. It's a massive multiplier, and um, a um, burn is regarded as combustion that is subsonic. An explosion is anything that's above, um, you know, supersonic. You can have combustion that is so much quicker than um, you know the speed of sound. And that's basically, in a sense, what you're creating. These pressure waves are, you know, this flame propagation 
you know, some of them are like 16 meters per second, 20 meters per second. You can go quite fast. It depends. All it's all dependent on the fuel. But we'll get into flame speeds and flame propagation in a different video. I'm kind of going down that road there. Um, but basically, when these two waves slam into each other, um, that fuel air pocket that just say is in between here, like this this will all of a sudden combust at rapid, rapid speeds and it basically falls into the category of explosions, hence, you know, detonation, that's why we kind of use that terminology, because it is an explosion and uh, as soon as you create an explosion you get a supersonic shock wave and that's what you hear is the pinging, that's the, you know, the knock, the pinging sound. Um, it's not just the sound wave Traveling, it's reverber, it's you know, it's reverberating on through your entire engine, and not only that, it's the shock on the piston and the con rod. You kind of hear that as well. You hear it at the crankshaft. So it, basically, your engine rings like a bell. So yeah, there's a definite line between the two. You know, one's before um, ignition is meant to take place, and one is after. Usually, um, beyond the boundaries of your flame front, or detonation can also take place at what we call your flame edge. You know what I mean? Um, a region here gets all of a sudden too hot and then a separate um, kind of like ignition event takes place um, that's very localised and very intense and then as soon as these wave fronts hit each other blah 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 I've done the video fucking hell shut up Matt <laughs> I hope that makes sense we'll do a lot more on this because there are a lot more things to take into consideration like I said diesels basically work um, on compression ignition you know so uh, any road I hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.